Hi, I'm Los Vogel Sharp. This is my life walking in the spirit. And this happened to me. These are true stories of miracles, answered prayers, signs, wonders, and deliverances from demonic entities that I have actually witnessed in the past 50 years of my walking in the kingdom of the Almighty God using the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Hi, I'm Louis Vogel Sharp, and this happened to me. I'm going to tell my complete story about the 124 um, out of body experience that I had. I'm going to start it from the beginning. So, most of you have heard bits and pieces of it, but you haven't really heard the whole story. So, I'm about to give you a most amazing miracle that I've seen in my life for 50 years that I've been walking with the Lord. Um, and God is, he's so amazing. And that's why I'm putting this series out. This happened to me because, um, I have seen God do so many things in my life that you can't help, but know that he's real. Jesus is real. And the Holy spirit is absolutely working in our lives today. So this is where my story starts in 1985. I was in my living room one day, I was on my knees and I was in prayer. And all of a sudden I had what I call them downloads, where it's like you just, it's, it, it comes from heaven and it just comes right into your spirit soul. It comes right into you. Something that the father is showing you or telling you. And that's what he did to me this particular day. He downloaded into my being a vision that he was showing me, which was of a little boy. And when I saw this little boy, I heard three things. He's going to have a heart for God. He's going to be very strong in natural strength. And he's going to be a lot like his father. And after the download came into me, I had this desire to have another baby. I had a son and a daughter already. I wasn't planning on having any more children. I was very contented with the two I had. But once this was downloaded into me, it became very real and I became very passionate about it. But I didn't get pregnant for seven years after that happened to me. So during the seven year time frame. I'm going to share some things that happened. I was very excited about it. I had been given a prophetic word from somebody in the church telling me I was going to have another baby. And I, when they said it to me, I was like, no, 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 thank you. I'm good to go. But I heard what they said and I always left it up to God, whatever his will was. So now I get this knowing that I'm having this son. It's going to be a boy. He tells me so. My life went that, that direction, just believing the father. So I used to go to the garage sales. We really had no money at the time. And I used to go to garage sales and look for little baby clothes. And I was already preparing for this pregnancy that I wasn't even pregnant yet. That's how strong I believe this. So I was buying little things here and there. I was buying nice things, you know, and, um, I, I bought, a, I, I had gotten a little um, wood carving thing saying Jesus. I was going to put it in my son's room when he was born. So I was collecting little things. And of course, months went by and I didn't get pregnant. And then years went by and I didn't get pregnant. And one particular year, I thought I was pregnant. I went and I got the test that you could buy in the store. I came home and I took the test and it showed I was pregnant. Well, the prophetic word from the father has come to pass. 
I was so excited about this. I told my husband, he was so excited. We told everybody we were going to have a baby. And this was like really exciting. This prophetic word that I had gotten from the father was now happening in my life. So I just walked around being very joyful about the fact that I was now pregnant with this baby. So about a week and a half went by. And all of a sudden, I started bleeding. And I was like, whoa, what's the deal with this? Now I'm getting upset in my spirit because that can't happen if I'm pregnant. I remember, I took the test and showed I was pregnant. So with that, I'm getting very emotionally disturbed about this whole thing because this doesn't make sense. I'm rebuking it in the name of Jesus and... I'm getting very upset. So I noticed that, yeah, I'm, it doesn't look like I'm pregnant or I just lost the baby. So that in itself was devastating. I felt like I was in the middle of having a miscarriage. And of course I tell my husband that he's devastated about it. Now we told everybody we were having this baby. So now we have to tell everybody, well, guess what? We're not having a baby. Something went wrong here. So I was determined to find out whether I had really gotten pregnant. Was the test a false positive? I needed to know because I, I, I knew that God had told me I was going to have this baby. So why would I have a get pregnant and then have a miscarriage? It doesn't even make sense. So I went and I had blood work done to find out if I was really pregnant or not. So I had the blood work done and it came back that I hadn't been pregnant. I was, wasn't pregnant at all which was devastating in itself because the test shows po showed positive. So after I was told that I wasn't pregnant at all, I got very, very angry in my soul. And I got very, very angry at God. And I remember one day yelling at the top of my lungs out to God, is this some kind of a cruel joke, I said, with tears streaming down my face. What is going on here? Somebody's playing games with me. Is this the enemy playing games with me? Because the enemy kept telling me, you're not going to have a baby. You're just getting older. And it's just in your brain to have another child because you're going to be past the age soon to even be able to have a baby. So you're just getting older. You're not, God never told you this was going to happen. But I knew that wasn't true because I knew I saw the vision. And when, when God shows you something and you get downloaded in your spirit about it, it becomes faith. Like, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Well, that's what I was dealing with. I had this knowing that I was going to have this baby. So this whole process of what I just went through was devastating to me. So I was disturbed with the father. I was disturbed with everything. So I just let the whole thing go. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm tired of agonizing over this. I don't care what happens. If it's meant to be, it will be one day. So years started going by and all the women in my church were getting pregnant and nothing was happening with me. Very upsetting for me. I had had two children, so I knew it wasn't a problem with me. So time goes on and finally after seven years, the day came when it was meant to happen. And just got moved by the spirit that day and my husband laid hands on me and he never did this before the whole seven years of us looking to have a child. He never did this, but this particular day he did this. He put his hand on my stomach and he prayed in the name of Jesus for me to get pregnant. And I was kind of shocked that he did it, but he did it. And I, I knew it was under the anointing. So with that, couple weeks go by and it looks like I might be pregnant. Now I'm perturbed about the whole thing. It's like, I'm not going through this again. You know, uh, I, I, I don't want have games played with me anymore. My emotions can't handle this. So I'm all disturbed now. And my daughter walks up to me out of nowhere and says to me, mommy, your eyes are glowing. And when she said that to me, I got a little bit perturbed about it. 
I was like, yeah, okay, here we go. What's going on here? What's the deal here? So I said, well, I'm going to have it done professionally this time to see if I'm pregnant because I'm not going through that again with a false positive. So I went down to the doctor's office and I said, I might be pregnant. Could I please have a test done? So they did the blood work. They did the test done. They did it. I didn't even tell my husband because I didn't want to disappoint him. I didn't want to get him upset. The only one that knew was my daughter. So I came home and I didn't say a word. A couple hours go by and the phone rings and it's the doctor's office. And she's like, your test is positive. I'm like, my test is positive? That means I'm pregnant, right? I said, she goes, you're absolutely pregnant. And with that, I got so excited. I just ran through the house. I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. God told me I was gonna have a baby. He absolutely said this was gonna happen. I'm absolutely pregnant. And of course, my husband got very upset about the whole thing, thinking, oh, no, what if she loses this baby? He went into a fear mode about the whole thing, which kind of perturbed me at the time, but that was where he was at. So I just ignored him, and I was, like, overwhelmed that I had heard from the Spirit of God. I waited seven years, not knowing at the time why I waited seven years. My son had to be a millennial, which I didn't know back then, but... To make a long story short, I am now in heaven. I'm so excited about this baby. My pregnancy went great. Everything was great. I was walking up the hills. I felt great. I mean, I, the typical uh, first three months, I felt a little bit nauseous, nothing, but, but it was nothing major. I was just so overwhelmed with the fact that I was pregnant that I could, I could handle any of that. So the nine months go by. And I wake up one morning and I get this shooting pain, like jabs me down there. And I get up and my water breaks. So now we're on our way to the hospital. So we go all the way to the hospital and they said to me, well, you're not even dilated yet, but since your water broke, we need to keep you here because you can get an infection. Once the water breaks, you know, any germs can get in there and cause a problem. So they admitted me into the hospital. So now I'm in the hospital and I'm not even dilated yet. I'm not even in real labor yet. So I was there for three days, listening to all the women having their babies, moaning, screaming, crying, getting more and more emotionally upset, listening to all the suffering that they were going through. So... By the time I went into real labor, I was already like blown away and all very anxious and very like upset about the whole thing. So now I'm in real labor. So I'm going through the whole labor thing and I get to the point where I feel I need to push the baby out. So the nurse checks me again and she says, you're not fully dilated yet. You can't push this baby out. I'm thinking, is she kidding me? You men won't understand this, but you women will know exactly what I'm talking about. When you feel the urge that you have to push the baby out, don't tell a woman she can't push the baby out because it's an automatic reaction in your body to push the baby out. So when you get that contraction and you're having that urge to push not to do that, it's, an almost, it's almost impossible. It's almost an impossible thing not to. It's a sensation that you almost can't not do do. So now they're telling me I can't do this. So I'm like going crazy about this whole thing because I'm trying to hold back from this sensation of pushing the baby out. So you're like, oh, you're trying not to do this, okay? With all your power and all your might, you're trying not to push when you feel the urge to push. So I was dealing with that. So they tell me, well, go into, tub, go into the tub. It'll help you relax and this and that and this and that. Fine. So I go into the tub and in the tub, there's nothing for me to hold on to. So I go into the tub and I slip under the water. <laughs> so my husband helps me up out of there. So I'm like, now I, I can't even deal with this anymore. All right. I'm not in my twenties anymore. Okay. I'm, all, I'm, I'm almost 40 having this baby. All right. It was 39. It was October and I was going to turn 40 that January. So I'm almost 40 years old having this baby and the contractions are so severe right now. 
And I'm doing, um, I was going to have them natural. So I'm doing the breathing thing. I'm slipping under the water. And it's like, I said, get me out of here. And the woman said to me, well, we can induce you to help you along. And she says, we can give you something for the pain. So I thought to myself, what am I being an idiot for? Just take something for the pain. Forget about the natural thing. Just do something for it. So I said, yeah, get me out of here. Do something for the pain. So they take me in the room and I'm now waiting for the moment when I can push the baby out. I'm still trying not to push the baby out, agonizing in that. So they give me an epidural. Well, when I got the epidural, I felt like I was in heaven. All the pain left, the pressure left, it was all gone. So I just laid there like, wow, thank you, Jesus. Such peace. So a little time went by again. Now it's later in the evening now. And I met, remember, I've been there for three days, okay? It's like the third day I'm there now. And um, it's later in the day. The whole day goes by. I'm in labor all day long dealing with this. And for hours now, I'm going through this not, I can't push this baby out thing. So finally, she says, you're dilated. You could push the baby out. Well, that was my goal. Anybody that's had a baby knows the one thing on your mind is you need to get this baby out of you. You need to do this and get this baby out of you. You're so focused on this. You don't care what's going on. You don't even care who's in the room. You got to get this baby out as fast as you can get this baby out. We're getting this baby out. So now I'm pushing this baby out with all my might. I'm pushing this baby out. So they had had a monitor on the baby and the monitor fell off the baby. And of course, nobody paid attention to it. They made one big error with me. All right. I was called a gestational diabetic. My sugar was a little high. So I was watching my sugar. Well, they came and gave me grape juice while I was in labor. They, I was able to sip some grape juice, which set my sugar shooting up. So they wanted to hit me with a shot of insulin. I said, don't, I don't want any insulin. I said, I just had grape juice. That's why my sugar's up. So they didn't do that. So now I'm dealing with that issue, all right? So I'm pushing the baby out. And all of a sudden, as I'm pushing the baby out, I am out of that scene. I'm out of that whole entire situation. And I'm floating somewhere. And I know I'm floating because I can feel the sensation just moving like, like you're floating in the air. And I'm like, where am I? What am I doing? What was I doing a minute ago when I was not doing this? And I got a little nervous about it. And I looked around and I saw like file cabinets and just like records, records of things. And I thought I was in the record room of the hospital or something. That's what I thought. But I was like, well, why, why am I here? And what am I doing? And as I got really nervous about it, I was like, what, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? All of a sudden, I realize I'm in the middle of birthing out my, my baby. And remember now, I don't know I'm having a son or not. I, I, I don't know yet. I didn't have, I never had the test done to see if was, I was having a boy or girl. So I don't know now whether I'm having a boy or a girl. But all of a sudden, I know I'm having a baby. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm having a baby. Then I see the numbers one, two, four, right in front of me. Very big. One, two, four. With that, I'm back in my body. And I'm pushing out this baby. So I'm pushing the baby out. And the nurse says to me, Lois, you need to push really hard right now. And she was dead serious when she said it. And I, at the time, I didn't realize that the baby was in fetal stress. All right. Actually, he had stopped breathing. <laughs> so I push and the baby comes out. They take the baby away and they bring the baby over to the table. And I'm hemorrhaging at the same time right now. All right. I don't even know why, but I was. So they take the baby and I'm, I'm just, I'm in a birthing chair, you know, and I'm just there like just waiting for the whole process to be finished. And I hear the doctor say, this baby's dead. And I heard the words. And I thought to myself, that can't be right. It was devastating. I felt like my heart hit the floor. My husband was in front of me and I see him look. And then I hear the words again, 
this baby's dead. Like, the baby's dead. And there's nothing we can do about it. So I look at my husband, and he says, my baby's dead? And I got anger in my spirit. I thought to myself, how could he say those words? This was a prophecy given from the father seven years ago. Waiting all this time to have this baby. There's no way this baby can be dead. With that, the spirit rises up inside of me. And I turned to the nurses and I looked right at them. And I said, my baby's not going to die in the name of Jesus. And the two of them looked at me as if I was nuts. But when I said Jesus, now I didn't see this. My daughter who was standing across the room watching this whole thing take place. She told me later on that when I said Jesus, he took a breath and came back to life. No doctor brought him back to life. No pumping of the heart brought him back to life. They had said he was dead and they were done. But when I rebuked it and said, my baby's not going to die in the name of Jesus, he had already been dead. But he took a breath of life when I said, Jesus. And we were the talk of the hospital, the miracle of this baby coming back to life. And that's what happened that day. My son was born dead and came back to life because of the name of Jesus and because the Holy Spirit rose me up to rebuke death in Jesus' name. Because if I hadn't have done that, even though a prophecy was given to me, he would have died. He would have been dead and he would have stayed dead. You can have a prophetic word given to you and if you don't hold on to it and you don't stand and keep it into your heart, and don't let Satan steal it from you. He will come to steal, to kill, and destroy. We have to stand fast on what God tells us. And I find out the one, two, four. I think to myself, well, what does that actually mean? I was born January 4th. My late husband was born February 4th. And that day was October 4th. It was October 4th, 1992. And I was given the prophecy in 1985. That's a seven year span until I had the baby. And the one, two, four, as time went on, I'm married to Gary now. Gary started doing some research on the number one, two, four and what it actually meant. To me, it meant a miracle. <laughs> and God was showing our birthdays and the miracle that took place that day, the four, four, four of our birthdays. But it also means a going back to Eden, full circle coming back. The end time frame that we're in, how we're going to rise up and walk with miracles and wonders, signs and wonders, and answered prayers and deliverances, which is what this is all about. And that's why I'm putting this series out. It happened to me. So the one, two, four time frame that I'm always talking about has to do with that. And I'll be back and tell you a couple more times when that number was very prominent and miracle took place after that number was seen. So I'll be back when he says be back again and have a blessed day.